Greetings, fellow humans. Today we are here to talk about the increasing evidence supporting the fact that the opioid epidemic is a complete fabrication by our United States government. Also, this alleged opioid epidemic has now caused people with regular ailments, quote-unquote regular, such as anxiety, depression, things of such, like ADHD, whether or not they exist, people can't get their medications now because of such a shortage. Ever since of COVID, people have had a hard time getting pain medicine as well as simple benzodiazepines. So why are they attacking people's quality of life? Why are they attacking people's sleep patterns? Why are they attacking people's calm? Well, in my opinion, the government realized that they gave people a little bit too much value in an inanimate object and they're taking it back. It's almost like if you gave a child an M16 instead of a BB gun to play with in the backyard. You would take that back realizing, holy crap, we've given you the wrong um, or too powerful of a um, object and we must replace it. So I think that's personally what's going on right now with the United States government and you know human civilization. Um, as prices increase of pills, as um, people pour into this country with huge uh, addiction problems and, um, you know, health ailments, you know, the price of these real pills, whether it be a Xanax or a hydrocodone or an oxycodone or an oxymorphone, it doesn't matter. The prices of those inanimate objects, these pills are going through the roof. So now we have something that is gaining value is gaining rarity and is also becoming halted in regards to production. And we have the United States dollar, which is absolutely being just, just printed by the masses, being absolutely flooded into the market. The United States dollar is losing power, it's losing credibility, it's losing its actual worth every single day as America crumbles and as we continue to print this, you know, valueless currency that's not backed by anything. You know, it used to be backed by gold. It used to be backed by silver. Now it's not backed by shit. It's backed by Joe Biden. So I hope you're, uh, you know, content with your money being there. Now, back to the point here. When you have all of these medications like opiates, benzodiazepines, um, whatever they are helping people, and they actually start to turn into a somewhat currency, they form a value, um, it becomes a source of power, right? So... Advil is not very valuable because we have an everlasting source. It is abundantly available, basically any country you go to, and it's generally not that effective. In fact, Advil has killed more people each year than most club drugs. So it's all about perspective when you talk about these things. Now, me as a, let's say I am 30 years old, to put it in perspective, and I go to get pain medication after a serious car accident, very serious, and other complications. For me personally, it is extremely hard to get. Back in the day, maybe they were prescribing oxycodone. Um, you know, maybe they're prescribing oxycotton more frequently. Now, I know a lot of older individuals that have been to doctors, that have had chronic pain, that have had surgeries, and they were never offered a single opiate. And that was, you know, for their 70 years of life. Um, some people only get offered serious opiates if, you know, had cancer or, you know, for um, post-operative pain for ACL surgeries. But even then, they're going to give you a low dose. So me personally, in my life, I know a lot of people who have been given medications, but it was never opiates. Um, it was never offered. And it was never offered in their long term. So this whole opioid epidemic over prescription it is blown out of proportion. Are there people that have had problems with these medications? Yes. But this over this over dramatized event that's happening, right, is causing people to uh, basically turn their backs on people who need care. And also it screws up the game for everybody else who is not even legally prescribed. Now, obviously, I don't recommend anybody does any illegal drugs or does anything on the street but back in the 1990s 1980s you could get you know pain medicine from a buddy um and pay money for that but nowadays 
everything's fake, everything's laced with fentanyl, everything's some designer drug, and the Chinese and the Mexican cartels, specifically Sinaloa and, you know, uh, New Generation Cartel are teaming up to basically, let's say, crumble America to its knees, and they're utilizing very high-potency, semi-synthetic opioid analgesics, they're using political pushes, they're using a lot of things, but... As this is happening, it demonizes the exact cure that a lot of these people are um, receiving. And for me, again, personally, somebody who's been in, you know, serious car accident, everything like that, it's a fight just to get a simple hydrocodone prescription. It's a fight to um, actually get what works. Now, even though codeine and morphine are naturally produced in your brain, they would rather give you anything else because it looks a lot better for a doctor nowadays to prescribe anything else other than an opiate. So they'll give you meloxicam, which can cause liver failure. They'll give you high, high, high doses of Tylenol without any opiates. They'll give you carbamazepine. They'll give you um, methacarbamol. They'll give you anything else but a scheduled substance that works. And all of these over-the-counter slash prescription-only non-scheduled pain relievers all have nasty side effects, horrible, horrible contraindications. And to be honest, a lot of these over-the-counter slash prescription-only um, substitutes are worse for the body and the mind. And these doctors know that, but they'd rather give you something that's worse for you, that gets them in less trouble, than something that actually works. So now when I go to the doctors, it's hard to get a prescription for something that actually works. Once you actually get that prescription, I hear a lot of people are looked at funny. They go into their doctors, um, they get weird looks. Sometimes they're refused. They are um, referred to a different doctor. A lot of times, even if you get this prescription, nowadays your pharmacy will not fill it. They don't have it in stock. They won't get it in stock. They can get it in stock, but they just prefer not to. Um, that's why you always go to an independent pharmacy. Fuck CVS, fuck Rite Aid, fuck Walgreens. They're all going out of business for a reason. I've said it before. Stay away from those junk Walmart-like brands. They will not serve you well. But if you do happen to get a legal prescription, they will still look at you weird. Unless you're going to an independent pharmacy. And even then, because of the connotation, people will look at you like you got three heads, even if you're getting hydrocodone five milligrams. Now, me personally, it doesn't happen to because they know me and I know them. But for your average Joe Smo or anybody who doesn't understand simple pharmacology or if you look like you're just jonesing out, they're going to look at you funny. And a lot of people aren't even going to um, fill your script as promised. They're not going to actually um, fulfill it. So... You can get a script all you want. Doesn't mean you're going to get it. Same thing with promethazine coding. You can get anybody to write you a script for it. Nobody's going to fill it. Nobody has it in stock. It's all a battle against humanity right now. So to really sum it up, um, you know, you're going to get bad looks even if you get something legally. Now, let's say that you don't get a bad look and you get your hydrocodone and they smile at you and they wave. For me personally, a script of Xanax costs three dollars for like a 45 day supply you know if you get anything over the counter that's like you know albuterol right like um if you get amoxicillin for like a virus it's going to cost you like three dollars five dollars with my insurance specifically when i get hydrocodone fifteen dollars for a generic amneal brand and that's their way of fighting the opioid crisis as the government is concerned is to increase prices by approximately five to ten times so now people are paying 50 cents to a dollar per pill versus for their whole script and that's just the government's way of saying fuck you not only can you not get your meds but when you can we will bleed you dry of your money until you are now in pain and lacking of wealth so in my opinion, there is a lot of mal intentions with this. It's not exactly a marketing scheme to make people want to buy ketamine now or the next biggest thing. It's actually an attack on human comfort, an attack on human health, 
and attack on anything that's legal. So basically, I'm not saying to distrust the government. I'm sure all these videos will be taken down, but I've seen a lot of people go down a very bad path um, and be misled, right? So talk to a doctor, a good doctor, not just somebody that'll prescribe you anything. Do your research and stay off to the streets because anything that's on the streets is just fentanyl. And anything that you're getting from your doctor nowadays is going to be real, but it's not going to be what you expect. If you go in for anxiety nowadays, they're not going to give you a Xanax or a Valium. They're going to give you everything else first. And once your penis doesn't work from the SSRIs that they tried giving you 30 different times and increasing the dosage, maybe they'll think about giving you one dose of lorazepam every month or something. So it's a sad world we live in, especially if you're suffering from pain or any kind of ailment. If you have... You know, if you want to get a sexual transition surgery, then, you know, now is your time. You know, you're in fucking luck because they will prescribe you any male or female hormone that you don't need as long as you do not need it. If you're somebody who needs testosterone replacement therapy, well, have three blood tests, spend like two grand, and then maybe we'll consider it. So a very, very, very evil message we are getting here from our government, a very, very negative political push that's happening. Um, again, all I can say is stay off the streets, talk to your doctor, do the research, but don't believe the hype. This is not what it seems. It's just another facade. Please be safe out there.